Hi everyone, Charles here for MLU Papers. Today, we are going to deep dive into Google's algorithm, PageRank, and we will see two different approaches to this problem, the stochastic one and the optimization one. Now, if you are interested in a career or a job in machine learning, PageRank is a very frequent job interview question. I have personally been asked this question when I was applying for an internship after my master in machine learning. So if you are in the job market, this video can definitely help you land your dream job. Now, if you have seen my previous videos, first, thank you so much for watching, and I am glad that you're enjoying my content. But you also know that on this channel, I share with you my take on the most recent and the most inspiring research papers that I come across in my research life in a hopefully nice and approachable way. And today is no exception. I have come across a fantastic recent paper on PageRank, which uses some important machine learning techniques. I will present it as a part two of today's video in two weeks, so stay tuned. In today's video, I will first introduce PageRank's rating problem. Next, I will show a stochastic approach to that problem. And finally, we will look at it from an optimization perspective. Before we get to the core of the topic, if you enjoyed this new tutorial type video, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified of future videos. Thank you so much. Let's jump into Google's algorithm, PageRank. PageRank's rating problem. Historically, the algorithm PageRank was introduced in a technical report from Stanford University written by Larry Page, Sergey Brin, Rajiv Motwani, and Terry Winograd. And yes, the first two co-authors founded Google based on PageRank, which then became one of the most impactful machine learning algorithms ever created. So basically, the web is a collection of pages. Each web page may contain links to some other web pages, which also have links to some other web pages, and so on. Formally, we model the web as a giant directed graph whose vertices are web pages denoted by 1 to n. If the web page i contains a link to the web page j, then we draw an edge from the vertex i to the vertex j. We denote by di the number of links contained in the web page i. If you are surfing the web, you are moving from one vertex of a graph to another by walking on the edges. Now, the main question for page rank is to define the rating r1 to rn for each page 1 to n, such that when you make a Google search, it will recommend you each page i based on its rating ri. Now, how do we define ri? PageRank defines ri as a measure of the popularity of a web page i. In other words, ri is the probability that an internet user visits page i, and up to a constant, you can think of ri as the average number of people who visit the web page i every day. Then, each of these people will move from page i to one of the pages page i links to. In other words, if a page i has links toward di pages, it will send ri divided by di people to each of the pages and therefore, taking the perspective of page j, it will receive ri divided by di visitors from each page i that links to it. As a result, the total number of visitors rj of page j will be the sum of the ri di from all the i that links to j. However, there is a little problem here. Assume that some page does not link to any other page, like the one in red here. Let's see what happens. Then after some time, it will capture everyone, and at the same time, its rating will be huge. To avoid the problem, we add a little penalization epsilon alpha j, and the formula becomes this. The idea behind it is that alpha 1 to alpha n is a probability vector on the web pages called the teleportation distribution. Each web page i releases a fraction epsilon of its visitors who will be teleported to page 1 with probability alpha 1, to page 2 with probability alpha 2, and so on. The remaining 1 minus epsilon fraction of the visitors of page i simply follow the edges page i points to, as described before. The total number of visitors, or rating, rj of page j, is hence defined as the number of visitors who come from other pages links, plus the number of visitors who are directly teleported to the web page j. It now remains to choose two things, the teleportation distribution alpha 1 to alpha n, and the parameter epsilon. Let's start with the teleportation distribution alpha. So in practice, many choices are possible. The standard choice is the uniform distribution alpha i equal to one out of n for any page i. 
This means that you can be teleported anywhere with the same probability. Another possible choice is to set alpha i0 is equal to 1 for some page i0 of your choice and alpha i is equal to 0 for all the other pages i. In this case, every teleportation leads to page i0. This gives a special importance to the page i0. You could also choose k pages, i1, i2, ik, and set alpha i1, alpha i2, and so on till alpha ik, all equal to 1 out of k, and alpha i is equal to 0 for all the other values of i. For example, you can choose for i1, i2, ik, all the web pages related to machine learning. So that includes this channel's blog, mlnewpapers.com. <laughs> but more importantly, if you do this, you will increase the rating of the web pages related to machine learning. And this is how you can provide personalized rating. Finally, what is the choice of Absalon? So Google initially said Absalon is equal to 0.15. The current value is still close to 0.15, but the exact value is one of Google's best kept secrets. And I don't know it, of course. All right, so now we know the definition of a rating. Next, I will give you two important perspectives on this problem. A stochastic perspective. The first perspective we take is the stochastic one. Consider an internet user who is surfing the web, a web surfer. So our web surfer starts from some web page x0 and will move on to page x1, then to page x2, and so on, following a special procedure. When the surfer is at page xt, with probability 1 minus epsilon, it will select uniformly at random one link from page xt and follow it. With probability epsilon, the surfer restarts from any page i with probability alpha i, the teleportation distribution. The sequence x1, x2, xt of pages visited by the web surfer is called a Markov chain. If you want to find the next page location xt plus 1 of a surfer, and you already know that the current location xt of the surfer is i, then knowing the previous locations x0, x1, xt-1 will not give you any additional help. The probability that its next visited page xt plus 1 is equal to j, given that its current page xt is equal to i, is equal to the probability that the surfer follows the link from i to j, if it exists, plus the probability to be directly teleported to page j. Now, if we only know the starting page x0, where will the surfer be after many steps t? Markov chain's theory states that if the teleportation distribution is uniform, then there exists a probability vector x1 star, x2 star, xn star, such that no matter the starting page x0, the probability that xt is at i is equal to xi star. x1 star to xn star is called the stationary distribution of the Markov chain xt. This is also true for some other teleportation distributions, but I won't get into the details now. What is important for us is that the probability that a user visits page i is equal to xi star. But by definition, this is equal to the rating ri of page i. An optimization perspective. Now, let's take a completely different look at this problem from the perspective of optimization. Let us rewrite the definition of a rating using vector and matrix notations. We denote by R the rating vector R1, R2, Rn. Then we define the adjacency matrix A such that Aij is equal to 1 if there is a link from page i to page j and 0 otherwise. Finally, we define by D the diagonal matrix of the vertices degrees. The equation satisfied by the rating in the green box can then be rewritten in matrix form as in the blue box. Then we move everything to the left side of the equation and we multiply by d to the minus one half. Next we perform the change of variable r is equal to d to the one half times x star and we can then simplify the products of powers of d. Finally we can factorize the terms in front of x star and we denote by q the big matrix in front of x star and we obtain a new equation for the rating vector r. Now it may be tempting to simply inverse q to solve it. However, there are two problems. First, nothing tells that this matrix is invertible. And second, this matrix is huge. Think that its size n is equal to the number of web pages out there. So inverting it would take too much time complexity. Now, there exists a variant of a problem in which it is assumed that the adjacency matrix A is symmetric and therefore Q is also symmetric. Then in that case, we can use the following very cool trick. We introduce the following quadratic function f of x. 
The left hand side of a previous equation is the gradient of f of x. And the previous equation simply means that we are looking for x star, which annihilates the gradient of f of x. But any local minimizer of f of x also annihilates the gradient of f of x. So a local minimizer of f of x is a good candidate for x star. Besides, x star is equal to d to the minus one half r, where r1, r2, rn are non-negative ratings, and thus x1 star, x2 star, xn star are also non-negative. The problem then boils down to minimizing the quadratic function f of x under the constraint that all the xi are non-negative. This is a classic convex optimization problem called the quadratic program QP. As a final point of consideration, while PageRank is at the heart of Google, the current Google's algorithm is much more complicated as it has evolved since the original PageRank. However, PageRank is still at the heart of the algorithm, and I have put a link to the original technical report from Stanford University, where PageRank was first introduced in 1998. If you're interested, the link will be in the description down below. If you enjoy this type of tutorial videos, please give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comment section down below if I should do more of these in the future. I would love to hear your feedback. Also, don't hesitate to share this video or any of my videos on any social media platform. I am sure that there are many other enthusiasts interested in this type of content. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to get notified of the next video. I'll upload new content every week, so stay tuned. Thanks again so much for watching. I wish you a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.